What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade, actually two trades that I made today on the 9th of April in 2019, as well as talking about Apple stock. Did Apple get upgraded? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, as well as talking about some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching here in the month of April. But before we do get into all of these different topics, guys, all I ask from you is if you enjoy the content here, if you find value in the content here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box for you, one of them being our 100% free Discord group chat and the other one being our 100% free Facebook group. You'll find a ton of valuable information in there. You'll be able to interact with a bunch of investors and traders and I guarantee you, you'll find those resources helpful. So without further ado guys, let's talk about what ended up happening today in the markets, and I'm sure you guys can see this at a quick glance, and if you guys paid attention to the markets today, yes, we finally had a substantial red day out there in the stock market. The SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded companies in the United States stock market ended up closing at about 28.78 here, down nearly 18 points at the close, down about 0.61%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down a bit more in terms of percentage, down nearly 0.75%. 0.72 to be exact, down 190 points at the close, priced at about $26,150. And the NASDAQ composite here, guys, down less than the other two indexes, but still down nearly 0.4% right now, down about $30 here. And yes, this is the future, hence why it is still moving right now after market hours. But let's see where where it's moving. It seems like, yes, it did consolidate a bit towards the end of the market. We gapped down roughly to about 75.80. So I guess you can say we closed roughly down 40 points ish on the NASDAQ, roughly half a percent down at that point. So we finally ended up getting that pullback today, which we've been waiting for, guys. If you've been watching the channel, you've been following along with the market yourselves, we've been waiting for this pullback, right? And let me explain why. So for those of you guys that have been following the channel, I've been talking about how every single time over the past couple of months that the SPX, the S&P has pushed to a high, we've plateaued and we've seen a retracement, right? Take a look. We popped to a high, we plateaued, we saw a retracement before continuing the uptrend. We plateaued, we pulled back, then we popped up, right? Plateau, pull back, pop up to a higher high, and this is where we are, right? We ended up, you know, consolidating for a little bit at that 2890 level that we've been talking about over the past couple of days and now we're finally seeing the beginning of a retracement so the question now is you know are we going to continue to maybe pull back here for the next day of trading maybe the next two days of trading to maybe get back down to this 50 simple moving average support which has been a support over the past couple of weeks are we going to potentially hold above the 2860 level which is a previous resistance on the S&P these are some things that I'm personally asking myself but as of now now, you know, we saw over the past three days, roughly or two days, you know, we held that 2890 level for about one day here on the 5th. I believe that was on either Thursday. I actually, what was that? Thursday? No, that was on Friday. We held that level, right? That's the first day we popped above that resistance and held it as a support. And then on Monday, we actually uh, dipped down a bit, but we held the 180 SMA like we talked about in yesterday's video, which was a good sign that we were continuing the uptrend here and we pushed to a high. But today, 
today, we ended up breaking that support at 28.90. We actually saw a bearish cross here of the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA, and we actually started to really see a bearish pattern here on the intraday chart. And honestly, guys, I'm looking to see, are we going to pull back to the next support, which in this case is going to be at around 2870-ish, 2868, as you can see right here. That's going to be where I want to see, are we going to end up holding tomorrow, right? Are we going to maintain that level? Or are we going to break that level and then head to that support that I just talked about a couple of minutes ago at around 2860? So these are some things that I'm watching, and the bearish cross again here could signal another red day tomorrow based on these uh, mini charts here. And if we're just looking at the intraday chart, the one day, one minute, we can see the movement a bit closer, right? We gap down from 28.95 down to about 28.76. We lost about 20 points there in the SPX in the morning from where we closed yesterday. We saw some recovery here. We were talking in the group chat today how, okay, this could be a potential bullish recovery in the SPX, but we ended up getting hammered down even more. And this is actually where I ended up taking my trade uh, a little bit later on in the day, and I'm going to be talking about that here in a couple of minutes, so stay tuned for that. And then we ended up closing a little bit lower from where we ended up gapping down. Actually, no, it was not a little bit lower. It was a bit higher from where we ended up gapping down, but the low that we hit at around 28.73 was a bit lower from where we gapped down this morning. That's what I was trying to say, guys. So in terms of the SPX, you know, this just uh, this honestly could just be the beginning of some selling here, and just watch those levels of support that I'm talking about. So back over here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, guys, we all know by now, especially those that have been watching and paying attention to the channel, we broke out of the 26,200 resistance a couple of trading days ago, and this was a resistance from back in the beginning of November of 2018 and back towards the end of February. In 2019, we popped out of those resistance levels, obviously making them a new support level at that point. And we were hovering around that $26,400 level. I believe that was on Friday. And let me double check that for you guys. Yup, that was on Friday. We ended up maintaining that level as a support. But then on Monday, we gapped down, right? And we talked about this in yesterday's video how we were trading in between the $26,200 level and the $26,400. $26,400 level in the Dow Jones. And now with the red day that we saw again today, well, not a, yeah, again today, you know, we saw the second gap down from Monday, right? We gapped down Monday. Now we're seeing the second gap down, which actually broke us beneath that support level we were talking about at 26,200. And now we're actually maintaining the next support level, which in this case is $26,100. So instead of us trading in this horizontal channel like we were yesterday, we're simply trading in the one beneath it, right? So tomorrow, keep an eye. Are we going to maintain? the 26,100 support are we going to maybe pop back up and test 26,200 ish that level of resistance right now that is what I'm going to be watching and if we just hop back over here you know, why is that $26,100 level a support? It's because we pretty much bounced on that level back on the 2nd of April in 2019. We pulled back, bounced on that level, held a higher low, and we popped up, making that a resistance, right? or a support rather, right? Very simple. So now we just have to keep an eye on that level. And let's say we pull back tomorrow again, we break that support. We're going to be looking at this $25,900 to $25,000. $26,000 level of support, which is roughly about $150 away from where we are now. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ composite, guys. It's having a bit of difficulty right now, breaking out of the 76 $130 level of resistance. And we were talking about in yesterday's video how the NASDAQ has been trading in this horizontal pattern of $7,500, um, you know, that support level roughly up to about $7,630, that level of resistance. This is pretty much where we're trading right now. 
now. So tomorrow, very simple. Not much to say on this, guys. Is you know, just keep an eye. Are we gonna potentially pull back and retest this level of support? Are we gonna bounce on the 50 simple moving average here? Or, you know, are we gonna retest that resistance, guys? These are things that I'm gonna be watching for patiently tomorrow. But if we just take a bit of a closer look here, it does seem like we got rejected yesterday exactly at that resistance. We talked about that in yesterday's video. We brought Broke the 50 SMA support today on this one or, or this 20 day one hour chart. So this is something worth noting. Since we broke that support, we could be headed to the 180 SMA support here. So just keep an eye on that, guys. So pretty funny. I made a video yesterday you know, talking about how far we are from all-time highs, right? We were roughly about 1.5% to 2% across of the major indexes here. And with this red day here, guys, we're brought, we got brought down a little bit, so we're actually a bit further right now from all-time highs. And I did ask you in yesterday's video to drop a comment letting me know when do you think if, you know, if we even do, when do you think we're going to hit these all-time highs? And I got a consensus of around one to two weeks. Some of you thought we might hit it this week. Others thought, you know, we're going to pull back and potentially hit it in the next two weeks. And it seems like with this pullback slowly starting to form now, you know, this week, us hitting all-time highs this week is getting a bit out of reach unless we just go ballistic, unless we just go haywire tomorrow and the next day and of course on Friday and we make up this loss plus gain another 2%. You know, it does seem like if we pull back tomorrow, right, if we have another red day, we pull back a bit more, you know, we're going to be looking at more of a horizon of two, maybe two and a half weeks from now before we do hit all-time highs. And again, I would love to know what you guys think about that, right? Do you think we're going to hit it next week? The, the week after, are we going to hit it at all? Are we going to, you know, completely, um, you know, start selling off like crazy right now? Is the market going to be spooked out? And speaking of the market being spooked out, I almost forgot mentioning this. Trump, a reason why the market dropped today, my personal opinion, the catalyst is because Trump was saying he's going to put tariffs on on European goods right now. And this kind of sco uh, sp uh, scooped, spooked the market, which is why you can, uh, you know, one can say, okay, the market dropped today. You know, whenever Trump does anything big like this, you know, whenever there's negative news regarding trade, the market doesn't really like that. And we all know that by now with the whole Trump and China situation that is still ongoing. And we've seen, you know, the stock market react very quickly to the upside, to the downside due to that situation. So while you're at it, let me know in the comments what you think about that. So let's just hop into the trading update very quickly today, guys. It wasn't too much of an eventful day today for me. I actually ended up selling off my Tesla uh, this morning. That Tesla, sh the Tesla shares that I was holding um, from last week. I ended up selling those this morning. We can see here, uh, it was towards this time period here when we dumped down to 269. I was honestly getting a bit scared here when we were dumping aggressively this morning on Tesla. And then when I was watching it, to be completely honest, guys, I, I was telling myself, okay, we're getting close to my cost basis right now. You know, a couple of analysts downgraded Tesla. I want to just you know, take the small profit on the remaining shares that I did have on the next pump up. And we saw the little pump up here all the way to 274. Did not take my uh, share or my profits here. Rather, I took them right around here somewhere around 271 to 272. I forget exactly where I did end up taking those profits, but it was a small profits from the remainder of the shares that I did hold from last week. Made a little gain on those overall coming out in the green on my Tesla position. So that's a quick little update on Tesla. And you see the remainder of the day, guys. It seemed a bit bearish. You know, we got the 50 SMA crossover here to the downside. You know, which is a bearish uh, cross when the 50 crosses below the 180 SMA. And if we're hopping to the 20 day, one hour chart here, we're seeing another bearish cross on the 20 day, one hour, 50 below the 180 SMA. We're starting to see a potential push to yesterday's 
you know, support levels. And if we break this support level at 270 and we potentially start to go into the 260s again, that's not going to be a good sign because that's pretty much breaking the higher high, higher low pattern, right? Remember in yesterday's video, the whole reason why I held Tesla is because it held the higher low from the previous, right? And the uptrend was still intact. But the fact that we failed to push to a higher high today and we're, you know, we're testing the previous low. And if we break that, that's going to be the beginning of lower highs and lower lows, which is the start of a downwards trending pattern, which I don't want to be a part of in terms of swing trading, which is why I played it safe. I took a little profit here. I jumped out a bit early, but honestly, guys, I was just really reevaluating the whole position and mitigating my risk there, just taking a small little profit, and I'm cool with that, right? So let's talk about what I did on my second trade, which I actually was able to get into TVIX as the markets did end up popping back um, you know, we saw that recovery on the pop back up in the SPX during the middle of the day. And I was watching it here to see, you know, are we going to end up getting rejected again by the 2890-ish level of resistance, which we did end up getting rejected about three, four points below that. And are we going to slowly start to sell off from there? And we did start selling off aggressively and TVIX started to do very well here in the middle of the day, roughly around 1220 PM Eastern Standard Time. And I actually ended up taking a little position. I think it was around like uh, 12, 50, 1 o'clock or something like that once TVIX was really starting to push up and we got the confirmation that, you know, the SPX was slowly starting to pop below these moving averages. We were slowly breaking below supports here at around 2180. We could see, you know, roughly at 1 o'clock-ish that started to happen, right? And that's when I ended up taking my position TV. IX, and we can see from there, guys, it went from 24 all the way up to around $25. And I pretty much captured around a 2% profit here on TVIX. And let me show you guys, you know, what I ended up doing here. So roughly at around one o'clock is when I ended up getting in at around $24 and I believe 65 cents. Ended up riding it up near that resistance that we saw in the morning at about $25.12. It was a very quick run up here over the span of about, what was that, about an hour, hour and a half is what I ended up uh, holding it for. And that was about a 12, or not a 12%, I wish it was 12%, guys, a 2% gain up to around $25.12, which again was that resistance. And I wanted to just play it safe. We were overbought at this point. I was up 2%, hit my daily goal in terms of day trading and, and we were at a resistance from earlier in the market and again I just wanted to play it safe took a two percent profit right there on TVI X so that's pretty much you know the trading update here and might as well actually no before we do talk about that let's talk about this Apple upgrade very very quickly I have an article right here and Wedbush um, you know they actually Upgraded Apple shares. We can see here Apple shares slightly higher as Wedbush continues uh, to price the price to target from 215 to 225. They got their shares boosted um, by $10 here, and the reason is because Wedbush is expecting 60 million to 70 million iPhones will be upgraded or replaced out of the key China region, and we all know China is a huge market for Apple and for Apple to prosper right China needs to be you know stimulated right China needs to be buying Apple products this is something we all know by now right and based on you know this is coming from the next 12 to 18 months according to these analysts based on the 900 million active iPhones that are currently in use and 350 million that are in a window of upgrade opportunity right and we saw some price cuts over there in China to stimulate some more um, you know demand because we saw a couple of months ago we saw the whole debacle with China sales being down with iPhone right and China again is one of the biggest markets out there in the world and especially for Apple and we need to see Apple prosper in China so hopefully guys you know this does end up coming true right I personally do believe that Apple is at a decent 
value right now. One can judge it is a bit overvalued due to it popping above $200 again. $150 was extremely undervalued a couple of months ago. And with this, you know, this news coming out, you know, over the next 12 months, I can definitely see Apple going up to 215, 220 as long as the economy stays um, you know, the way it is. You know, obviously we're slowing down. Let's say we hit a recession. My opinion on that would change. But if we were to stay the way we are right now, you know, I think there's a decent chance that Apple does get up to 215 to 220. So I guess I would agree here with Wedbush. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, Apple was at $230 a couple of months ago, right? That was where we ended up peaking out, right? $233. And now that we're on Apple, let's just break it down very quickly, right? We saw we actually dipped down to 199.5 today. And we actually almost had the 10th straight day of gains in Apple stock, which I believe would be the longest streak since October in 2010. Isn't that crazy, guys? Guys, literally, the last time we had 10 straight um, days like this of strong green movement in Apple was about 9 to 10 years ago. But we failed today. Today was the ninth day. If we were to close up green today, guys, it would have been the 10th day in a row of this. But nonetheless, if we're breaking it down here, this is one, of course, that I'm looking to swing trade and I'm, I'm, I'm invested in it, to be completely honest with you guys. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this. We see we got rejected at the 200 level of resistance right here and seems like we're pulling back. So this could be a good opportunity for a swing position. If let's say we were to pull back a bit tomorrow and retest maybe 197 maybe $196, roughly around the support level. This could be a good entry back up to 200 maybe back up, you know, if we break that, maybe up to $210. This is roughly where I am watching Apple stock. Another one I'm watching is, of course, TVIX, right? If we were to continue to sell off tomorrow, if we see the futures are red tomorrow, if we see some large caps that have weight on the markets, they are red tomorrow, TVIX, we all know, goes up when the markets are selling off, specifically the S&P 500. And if we see the futures are down, this could be a very solid play tomorrow. We can see with the little red day that we had, these shares were up almost 6% today. So keep an eye tomorrow on TVIX. Potentially, if we break the 50 SMA here, if the markets sell off, this could be a very solid play tomorrow. So Facebook actually did very well today. And we saw a bit of a rejection roughly at that 178, 179 level of resistance that we were talking about a couple of videos ago, right? And Facebook's up about 1.5% today at the close, $2.65, pretty solid day. So so tomorrow, what are we going to do in terms of Facebook, right? Are we going to break 180? Are we going to potentially hold 180 as a support before we go up to 185? This is something that I'm watching. And if we do do this, this could be a potential swing trade like I've been saying here over the past couple of days. So crude oil... We actually got a bit of a pullback in crude oil today as the markets did pull back as well. And we're starting to see a green reversal candle here on the 184 hour chart. So is this going to be the next spot where crude oil pops up again? Are we going to end up retesting the high 64s? This is something that I'm going to be watching tomorrow. And crude oil, of course, is a is a future that we uh, trade. Uh, we trade two ETFs that are based upon this future, UWT and DWT. Those are the ticker symbols. And whenever crude oil is going up, UWT is going up as well. So this is one that I'm watching on the potential upside reversal tomorrow for crude oil. So let's just see. Um, I know you guys were talking about Nvidia. I know you guys were talking about. At V and Nvidia today, I took a swing position in that yesterday. For those of you guys that don't remember, this one actually ended up pulling back and retesting that level of support from a couple of days ago, roughly, I believe, at around 187, 188, roughly about there. And we ended up recovering. So I'm still holding these shares and I do have a goal to sell them roughly at about 196, 197, right around here. And we do see the green candlestick forming here, which is a decent sign that we could be pushing up tomorrow we see a nice little reversal 
on Nvidia towards the end of the market. So this is one that I'm simply holding, and I might I might buy more shares tomorrow depending on what the market is looking like. But I just like the fact that we're just still holding above this support here. So at V is another one that I've been getting questions on. And you guys have been asking me about this one's actually not looking too good right now, guys. With this red day that we had, this could be considered one of the three lower highs we're seeing, right? Actually, one of the two. We see 48. We see 47.80, and this could be the next one at about 47.50, which is the beginning, in my opinion right now, of a bearish pattern. We really need to see Atvi get out of this resistance before I even touch it, and that's going to be around 48 dollars. So until then, I'm not really touching at the and before we end it off, guys, let's talk about JD.com because this is one that I've been watching and it's actually looking pretty good, right? The Chinese companies out there, Baba, you know, JD, Tencent, these have been companies that have been reversing over the past couple of weeks. And the fact that we're still maintaining the $30 level of support here, as well as the 50 simple moving average, all I want to see is a break into the 31s, maybe 3150 and a potential break out of this resistance before for trading JD. And this is one, honestly, at this point in time, along with Apple, you know, and potentially Facebook and TVIX, this is probably the fourth one, actually probably the fifth one as well as with NVIDIA that I'm personally watching. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. Let me know any other stocks and ETFs that you're watching. What are your opinions on Apple? What do you think about the upgrade? Are we headed back to 220, 230, 240? Are we going to 250? Or are we going to start selling off aggressively? I would love for you guys to know or to let me know. And if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below again, and subscribe to the channel. And really, that's all for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching again. Peace out.